Nick Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello, good day to y'all. How's it going? My name is Sean David, and I welcome you back to the basketball time machine. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends telling their funniest Michael Jordan stories. But before we dive into that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please take a look at the video of today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by MOVA. Now this is something which I'm really excited about. The MOVA globe is something you have never seen before. A rotating globe which is powered by light. It is truly the first of its kind and will turn when it gets exposed to ambient light. There are so many great designs, but obviously the basketball one is my favorite. It just looks amazing. At first I wanted to have it in my man cave, but now I'm actually thinking of moving it to the living room so that more people can see it. If you ever thought about a gift for someone who basically has everything, well, this is it. There are more than 40 different designs, including world maps, outer space and famous artworks. So what are you waiting for? Click on the link in the description box below and get 10% off 6 and 8.5 MOVA Globes with code BTM on MOVAGLOBES.COM Promo code BTM on MOVAGLOBES.COM Now the first player story that I want to take a look at is from Chauncey Billups, who actually has a very, very funny one. Let's take a look. So a lot of people didn't talk a lot of trash right, to me as well. Forth. But when I was a rookie, my fir very first game playing against Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Mm. Oh. And we had a guy named Greg Miner guarding mm -hmm. him. And, you know, it was a little dust up. Greg's playing hard. He's playing, yeah, of course, you got to play as hard as you can as MJ. Right. It's open at night. <laughs> My mom at home watching, the kids watching, everybody watching. <laughs> so they got in a little scuffle. <laughs> MJ's going to the free throw line. And he looks at Greg and he says, I should make you take my shoes off. <laughs> I look down, I didn't even realize it. I look down and he got the Jordans on. <laughs> so I said, oh man, oh, this is my first dude. game ever. I said, this is, this is what I got to look forward to. You learned a valuable lesson though, right? Well, obviously I didn't say much to MJ the rest of the night. <laughs> That's right. I didn't want to be on that reel. So that was my welcome to the league. Trash moment, talking even though it wasn't too me, thank goodness. You. And the next story that we're going to take a look at gets told by Byron Scott. And Byron Scott obviously played for the Lakers and had many bump-ins with Michael Jordan, but he's also one of the more funnier guys when it comes to telling stories. Let's have a look. I mean, it was uh, my 10th year in the league, so it was my last year with the Lakers at that time. We had drafted a guy, Anthony Peeler, yeah. from yeah. Missouri. Yeah. Lefty. Lefty, exactly. Yeah. So I hurt my ankle, so the trainer's like, I don't know if you're going to be able to play tonight. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, we'll see, you know, let's just wait till game time. So Chicago's bus is coming down the floor mm -hmm. and I'm walking out, MJ gets off and he was like, B. Scott, what's up? I said, man, what's up, MJ? He said, man, I heard you ain't playing tonight. I said, yeah, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. He said, well, if you don't play, who gonna guard me? <laughs> I said, Anthony Peter. He said, the rookie? Shit, 50. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. Hey, swear no to God. Pause. What? And so, no hesitation. No hesitation. <laughs> so I go home, I come back to the game, got my suit on. You know, the players go out to warm up, and then Anthony's coming towards the bench. And I say, Anthony, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. uh, he said he's going for 50 tonight. So, what you don't want to do is piss him off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I said, this is how you guard MJ. I said, don't be all physical and, and, and trying to body him because he, he's going to go around you, man. Yeah. I said, back up, give him space, dare him to shoot jump shots, challenge him. He make him, he make him. Right. I got him. I got him. Okay. <laughs> Every time MJ scored, he looked at me on the bench. I <laughs> told you. 54. I... Ooh. What? 54. <laughs> and Mr. Dunk, Mr. Breakaway Dunk that hit the back of the room. Yeah, I remember oh, that 54. Oh, little side yep, joint. Yeah, yep. I remember. He told me, he said, 50. 54. Now, as we all know, Steve Kerr is not only one of the best three-point shooters of all time, but also one of the most funniest people who ever been around the NBA. And yeah, obviously I had to feature more than one story. Let's take a look. Well, I've had a few of them. I routinely got embarrassed by guys who were a lot faster than me, for sure. But uh, I actually had to guard Michael one night. Uh, I played in Cleveland 
for the Cavs for a few years and started about 20 straight games because Craig Elo was injured. And most nights it was all right. I could find somebody I could guard, but here we play the Bulls and most nights. I got Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we start out the game. I get the first shot of the game, first possession. He closes out on me. I knock down a jumper. I'm feeling pretty good. The next couple minutes, he, he's just kind of dumping the ball inside. We've played five minutes. He hasn't scored, and I'm kind of feeling pretty good about myself. And finally, I realized, well, he hasn't even shot yet. So he was just trying to get everybody else involved. Long story short, he finished with 48, and I finished with two. <laughs> it was like, bam, all of a sudden, he just, it was like he decided, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start scoring now, and I'm going to guard the guy, and there was nothing I could do. Steve, what was that first year like? You're playing for, for Cotton? For that, Cotton Fitzsimmons. Yeah. You know, my experience was totally different than these guys because I was a, you know, late second round pick. I didn't know if I was going to make the league. I was on a non-guaranteed contract. And I'll never forget one of my first exhibition games, we played the Bulls. And I was just trying to make the roster. And Michael Jordan mm -hmm. gets the ball right in front of our bench. And I'm already scared to death. Like, God, I hope I don't get into this game. I'm, <laughs> I'm not ready for this stuff. And he holds the ball out. He holds the ball out and he looks right at me. And I'm on the bench, just kind of like, he holds the ball and he goes, watch this. And he turns, and he went right around Dan Marley, bam, dunks it, looks back at our bench and just starts laughing. And I'm looking like, there's no way in hell I can ever make this. <laughs> now I really don't want to. I thought, I, thought he looked at, I thought he looked at you and said, 10 years from now, I'm going to throw this to yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> he always called me short, little fella. Yeah, you need low ass. He always mm -hmm. called me low ass and that sort of stuff. So uh, we playing against them. Of course, he got the ball. He just came back from, uh, from retirement. He got the ball up in the air, and I'm at him. I, I'm playing on, on the baseline one-on-one. -on -one. And of course, everybody on my team know that I don't like help. Don't come and help me. You know, I don't care who you are. Where the guys, don't come and help me. Because, yeah, there's no, no back to try to back me down because guys ain't used to playing their back to the bats anyway. But anyway, this particular moment, and I guess this became infamous because he got as a card that's out where he's holding yeah. the ball up, and I'm looking yeah. right at him. I see know, it. And I'm I talking see shit that. to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking shit to him. I'm telling him, come on, what you gonna do? And then all of a sudden, he starts to try to back me in. And try to back me in and try to back me in. And then all of a sudden, he tried to turn around and shoot his little jumper. I smacked it down, but they called illegal defense on somebody because they wasn't in, they was on across the line. But I always fucking with that time. Look, you know how, you know that was a steal, don't you? Did you think you were as good as Jordan? Um, at that time. You know what? I think certain players, when you're at a certain level and top five, ten, whatever, top twenty in the league, like you feel like you're the best player. And so when I stepped on the court even against Jordan, I always felt like I was the better player. And when I came back, whether I was the better player or not, that's what I felt. But when I came back after four years, I mean, think of Derrick Rose and all the stuff he went. That was yeah. two years. Yeah. So I had four years of just, you know, injuries, you know, the body betraying you. You lose the confidence in your body, but you also lose the confidence in who you are. So instead of feeling like I'm that best player, yeah. now I'm just, I'm just happy to be back. You want me to guard Kobe? <laughs> All right, I'll go guard Kobe, you know? And, and, and so I lost a little bit of that edge that's necessary, I think, to be at that, that level. All right, your Jordan story so, before we take a break. So Jordan, I'm playing in Orlando. It's his last year. We play them in Orlando first, and I'm blocking his shot. Like, I'm locking him up. Like, oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm doing my thing again. I blocked his shot like three or four times. Oh. Like, I'm having my way against him defensively. Now, granted, he's 40 years old, but uh, I'm feeling good about myself. So. Uh, Fast forward a month later, we're in D.C. Uh, my ankle, we, we go to a doctor in Baltimore, and basically he tells me I'm done. Like, my ankle's, you know, once again, it's, it's not healed, it's broken, I have to have surgery. But I wanted to play against Jordan one last time. And so we're playing the Wizards. On, it's a TNT game. Wait, Thursday don't you want to go out where you dominate him yeah, and you're man, blocking I, his well, shots? I'm just thinking, you know, my ego. Like, oh, I'm thinking, like, okay. I had him the last yeah. game. I, I don't need this left ankle. Just give me some, like, give me some. I only uh, need Motrin. one ankle. Give me yeah. a bunch of Motrin. Okay. I'm gonna go out here. And when I tell you, he torched me in that first quarter. Like literally, he gave me 20 points in the first quarter on the same play. Like he just ran the same play every time and did this, like, you know, and I could not guard him. And so literally, I, I checked out of the game at the end of the first quarter. And I didn't even go to the bed. I just walked 
back to the locker room. <laughs> like, I was done. Like, literally had surgery, like, a couple days later. But it was like, I wanted to guard Jordan one last time. And you're right, I shouldn't have. I should have just let that go. Did he know you were a wounded animal? He probably did, because he went at me every day. And he didn't the care. the same move. You know, while making this video, I was thinking about maybe I should do a video about Michael Jordan's funniest moments because even though he was always a serious guy, there was also a funny side. So maybe this is a topic for a new episode. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.